time to join in them, I just go ahead and um, join the halves with masking tape, put it over, and I go inside oh, the glass. Okay. Yeah. okay, and then do your splice. Yeah. Now, it's probably beneficial to key them together, but I'm not making them. Well, joined. that's if you're making them joined in the mold. Right. Yeah. All right, so that's a That's how I would do my fuselage mold or something like that because it's so large. Right. Yeah, you'd want to uh, yeah, you want to key it together. Yeah. And it's not hard to do. Um, when you actually make the part, you know, you just put little dimples or something in. Mm -hmm. This is another little picture I made, John. It's a, what this does, if you want to take to make a parting board, right? So let's just say you're trying to make the cutout of this. Okay. Ideally, if you join these two halves together, what you do is you trace this outline from your pattern onto here. Mm -hmm. But let's say you already have a part in this stage and you don't have a parting board yet. I clay this thing up over the parting board like this, okay? And there's no cutout. But this tool here, this, this rides against the part and the pin goes down right here. So what you're doing is tracing the you're profile. You're tracing this point up here straight right down. down. So yeah. you run this and you mark the board here with this gauge. And then of course you pop this off and there's your cutout. Right, right. So it's this perfect. allows you to transfer this hey, to here. Three walkers already. Fantastic. Oh, am I on? Yeah, you're on. Okay. That's nice. So yeah, um, we're back from lunch. Thanks to John and Barb for the pizza. And what we're going to cover is a couple little quick things here. Um, and then we're going to slice up a block of foam. And then uh, go from there. What I'm going to do, maybe I already got this into the video. This little tool to ascribe around the part. Um, real quick, if you were watching the first half, there was something I was talking about with different curing agents. And John asked me, you know, how thick can you make the mold? Or one of the watchers was wondering what curing agent or what was used. And in the resin, it mentioned three different hardeners for the uh, casting resin. The reason why you had three different hardeners is depending on how thick you make the casting. So here's a good example here. This is called exotherm. The cup, <laughs> where's the cup before it was melted? <laughs> we had one here. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, let me see that cup. So here's what the cup normally looks like. And here's what it looks like when it's exotherm. So what it was is a chain reaction. Once the resin gets into this forward motion curing, it generates its own heat. And it's sort of a runaway process. Once it starts, you can forget it. It's gonna, it's gonna cook. So the danger is if you have the wrong curing agent and you're making a mold, and let's say you're making something this size, what would happen to this casting if you had the curing agent that was too fast and you had an exotherm, you'd end up with a mold like this. So that's why it's important. So you got to read the specs on the casting resin. Another thing I didn't cover, this, this prop here, this is a high temp mold. And when I was making parts, this was one of the last parts I made or mold. And then I sort of got out of it. But this is a high temp mold and there was no PVA. It was just a free coat, um, 770 was it? Now, free coat 700. That was a mold release for this. So, what I did is I came up with a pattern, and it's a lot of under camber. And it turned out to be a part that really wasn't optimal or a prop. So, but anyway, it was aluminum plate, 
and here's the drill rod. I got it sort of stuck in here, it's tight, but I'll get it out some other time. When I make these prop molds, and I was telling Sparky, I said maybe the next time we'll go over the whole thing on props, but not enough time to do everything today. But this is a quick overview. When you do a prop, um, it's like the landing gear of the bell crank. You clay this up, okay, the prop, you put the clay around at the draft angle, build the box, pour the resin. So that gets you this part here. So you flip it over, pour the, pull this out, you know, like that. So this comes out, I think I can get it out. You wax it up, or not wax in this case, pre coat it. Maybe a little clay to keep it from uh, seeping under. This goes back in, you build the box the other way, and you pour the other half. This is drill rod, not music wire. So you're casting around this music for the, the drill rod. This mold, it's I think it goes to 350. And this has been post cured, I think, to 300. So when I made this prop, and honestly, I can't remember what I made it out of, but it was a uh, HTR 250 or 350. I can't remember. I think I had a sample of it. And I'm pretty sure, like I said, we'll go over it in detail in another day. But this prop, um, no PEVA, pre coat. And when I made it, this mold was in the oven, I think it was around 150, 200. So I pulled this mold out of the uh, oven hot, and I started to lay this prop up. It was a high temp resin. And by being a really high temp, it allowed the resin to flow really well. And uh, it came out like this. This is the way it came out of the mold. This doesn't have clear coat on it. It hadn't been sanded. Um, Nothing's changed, but uh, are you on the center camera? Yeah. So that's the way it came out. And of course, there's some scratches on it now, but um, it, the finish is there's no pinholes uh, anywhere on it. Fifteen it's years already. ago, it was perfect. Today, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, you know, had some tape yeah. on there, so I had tape to some, but there's little tape for but there's came a, out just beautiful. Yeah, there's a few things on it, but basically it's by going with a high temp resin and a heated mold, um, you get a totally different look. Um, one of the ways I always check a prop resin, I give it the ping test. You, you get that high ping, and it's you know it's, it's a good hard prop. We have good audio guys. One thing I hate about this, I can't monitor yeah, the other. Yeah, So the pattern, the mold, to the prop. And you can't really tell it from looking here. Um, one of the things I did, it's surface coat in here, but you can see like little specks. And what that is, aluminum. And the aluminum, it's shot. It's smaller than a BB. It's like buckshot. But what you do, you take this casting resin and you mix that aluminum shot in there and it gives you more thermal properties and it also, it's less money, I guess, overall because the aluminum shot's less money than the casting resin. But uh, after the fact, I got looking at it and I remember doing that. So another day, we'll go over the whole thing and make these. Another thing... We were talking about these plugs at the last break. These plugs here were out of wren shape tooling board. And this wren shape, this here is wren shape 450. And um, here's some samples that Freeman sent me. This is a, here's a website or here's some information on this tooling board. Down a 
I don't know why it came out reversed on the uh, Source one and transition uh, watermark. Turn that off. There we go. All right. Now wait a minute. No, it's, everything's reversed on YouTube. Huh. Oh, come on. Let's see here. I need to flip the source somehow. More info. Framing grid. Countdown. Advanced settings. There's what I was looking for. Um, well, I can't. I can't get it reversed back the other way. So if the writing is do you want a regular backwards, I, I apologize. Can I use this? this be right. Yeah, but they're sort of flexible. Oh, he can read There's just that fine. gray handled one right there close to you. That should have a regular. Okay, I don't know why my computer has it backwards. It's it's right on this, but backwards on YouTube. Oh well, they can figure it out. They just have to write it down backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up in the mirror. Hold your computer up in the mirror. <laughs> okay, that's good. This one's sharp. But John, look at look how this stuff carved. Oh yeah. That peels off and curls up just like what it does. Wow. So, if you're looking for detail. Sort of carves like basswood. Mm -hmm. Without grain or. See, those, those uh, scalpels are so flexible. Yeah. Yeah, and no grain, no hard spots, no grain, no. Yeah. So, this is just to give you an idea how much detail you can carve into it. And uh, the neat thing about it, once you carve it, you wet, you don't wet sand. It's 600,000 grit, and then you're ready to wax it, pull the part off of it. So. Carves like butter, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Now, nice. if you use a hand plane, it's just as uh, easy to do. And, What's so nice is that, like you say, there is no grain, yeah. no hard spots, nothing to pull you off course. Yeah. Uh, so with Freeman, um, this wren-shaped tooling board, that's 450, and that seemed like the right balance for what we were doing. It comes in 440, which is a lower density block. Um, they've also got... Uh, a 460, it's a medium density, and this has a really silky feel to this it. This feels a little bit soft. Yep, it is. The Ren Shape 350, um, it's really soft. So if you have uh, something you need to hog out a lot of material and you want to remove material fast, 350 would be it. 
But the trade-off is you don't get quite the slick surface. You might have to seal that. This red shape 5166, it's a metal forming board. Hello. And this stuff's rock hard pretty much. It's uh, sandable and carvable, but it's it's hard. That's the wrong number. Bye. 5166. And you can tell this is hard. It weighs yeah, it weighs a ton. But it's let's say you're making a plug for backing forming. And then we got the MDF. Also, this L foam. This foam is uh, it's almost like uh, the stuff they use in uh, florists, you know, stick plants, and it's super light, easy to carve. But the trouble is, you got to fill it and finish it. Um, that comes in different densities. The nice thing about this is polyester doesn't isn't uh, one of the That's a closed cell. Yeah. So some of that. This board here, I think this was just tooling wax. You can rake it with your finger. So if you had a CNC machine shop and you wanted to make a proof of something, check your tool pass or whatever. That's where the, the wax, tooling wax green, would come in handy. Wax. Yeah. So that sort of covers that. Um, I'm going to mix up a batch of DTO81 and HTR250. And the reason why I'm doing that, I want to demonstrate real quick how to build up a thickness in a tool. If you can't really tell, but this tool has surface coat on it. Um, what is it, John? HT. HSC 302X, 302X surface coat. It's about an eighth inch, quarter inch. And then on between these four coats of glass, four layers of glass, there's tooling board that I formed up out of DTO 81. So four layers of glass, barely an eighth inch thick of that. But the thickness of this was built up with the uh, tooling board paste type stuff. So this thing in some areas is this thick. Um, it's a, at least three eighths or quarter all around. And what that does, it gives you a super rigid tool um, with a lot of support. Yeah, it doesn't look like you got to put a bunch of pieces of plywood or <laughs> and the thing wood is, chips or whatever to. And the bottom line is what I'm doing here might not be something that you want to do, but it could be something down the road that you utilize. But it's a quick way to build a mold. The DTO81, if you search it in a Google um, it'll come up, and it's on Freeman. It's the same website that uh, John showed you on the tooling board, and it's still available. This is what it looks like. You've seen the uh, hourglass in a bottle, or hourglass. It's a uh, really fine-looking sand, but it's not sand. It's some kind of phenolic. So let's see. What do we have? 10.5 on the cup. Okay, let's throw some of this in there. It's um, it doesn't really matter what resin you use. This DTO eighty one will fill just about any any type of resin. I got more paper towel in the truck. It's all part of the thing. <laughs> okay. It's all part of the thing. We buy big boxes of that stuff. You know, with the panic, the COVID panic, you know, everybody's yeah. running around getting toilet paper. You're getting shop I towels? I get paper towels. <laughs> yeah. We can all use paper towels to wipe with. We just can't get paper towels or toilet paper to do that. The, the serious stuff that yeah. we need. <laughs> 
Let's see how much how much resin I have in here. This good. Room 305 got disconnected. Okay. That phone that you had out there before is sort of similar to Rochelle phone. Yeah. You can't you can't hot wire cut it. Yeah. Or it's toxic. Yeah. And that might be the same way, I'm not sure. Okay, let's see here. Forty nine point five minus ten point five. Thirty nine plus twenty four percent. Plus the cup. 58.86. If you're making parts and you're all the same, come up with a standard and measure the exact amount that you need so that way you're not doing the math every time. Yeah. Fifty eight point eight six. I got it twice, so it must be good. Fifty eight point let's just say fifty eight point nine. Twenty four percent of the same curing agent we used on the prop or the landing gear, I'm sorry. It's probably about a gram over or a half gram over, so the needle's a little high. Close enough for the work we're going to do right now. So, what I'm mixing here HTR 250 106 3. It's a high temp resin. Where'd Sparky go? He's on the phone. You think we're still on camera? Yeah, yeah, we should. Hey, John, like you're on camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everything's fine. I can see everything but your head. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> That's good. Got you, got you from the shoulders down. Okay. Now, like I was telling John, you can do a lot of stuff with this uh, tooling board uh, mix here. Um, the neat thing about this is, my mind sort of wonders when I see the versatility of this. Let's just say you needed a jig and you had a drill bushing and you had that drill bushing at a certain angle. If you could suspend that drill bushing and sort of jig it up somewhere, you could form this tooling board compound around it and actually make a tool. Um, my mind starts to wonder of all the different possibilities. Instead of actually machining the tool, you could just take the certain parts of the tool, like a bushing or whatever, and just form this around it and make a tool. Now, this stuff is heavy. I mean, it's called a lightweight tooling compound. It's lightweight as far as composites are concerned. But it, it's, um, it's pretty heavy as far as modeling is concerned. This stuff isn't light. This is going to end up with this. Yeah. Hope everything's all right with his father. Yeah. That's what I think it is. That sounds like. So with the DTO81, this isn't something that's mixed up by weight. What you have to do is you have to mix it by feel and look. 
And right now, it's almost like a casting resin. And to be honest with you, if you didn't want to use that casting resin and you wanted to use HTR 250 to 1063, you know, you could almost come up with your own yeah. viscosity. Basically, this is like micro balloons or whatever, and you can add whatever you, yeah. however much that that you want to, to get the consistency of mayonnaise or toothpaste or. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can try, but I let it ring 30 times. No, I have to be sleeping. So now, okay. see, it's, yeah, it's hanging on, on there. Getting almost the toothpaste, almost. <clears throat> oh, is Richard there? Yep, yeah, it, it does just what micro balloons does, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Hello, hello, how are you doing? I hope you're doing better than what you're telling me. Robert, your son. Robert. Hopefully I don't make a mess out of your glass hello, table here. Yeah. Robert, your son. We get it while it's wet. I want you to get well. Kenny told me I better call. So now. Well, just, just, just know that I love you and I want you to get better. All right, Dad. I, I will let us see you. I'll talk to you. Love you. Bye, Dad. Bye. So the trick is, as you can see me mixing this, it gets too crumbly. It won't stay together, but if it's too runny, it won't stick to your... Uh, part to form the tool. Mm -hmm. And it can seem a little dry at times, but if you keep mixing it a little bit more, it'll get a little more wet, stickier. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we're right almost to the point where you could form it around the tool. I could see that wrapped around the handle. <laughs> I really could. And that's got the texture to yeah, it, to yeah. a non slip yeah. sort of texture to it. Mm. Yeah. Not looking good. Nope. Where's he at? Hospital Las Vegas. You got to go? No. Did he recognize you? Kind of. You have a brother, Sparky? Yeah, and a sister. Yeah. My sister's there and my brother's uh, in Colorado. All right, so... This is almost to the stage I was showing John, this uh, sample piece I made. This here was just a scrap chunk of resin and DTO 81. And I got done making the part, <clears throat> the tool, and I grabbed the rest of the dough. And I squeezed it. I thought, you know what? That might be a good start to a handle. But... It just depends on your preference. You look at 100 flyers, they have 100 different handles, but um, it definitely fits your hand. Well, yeah, you can mold it right exactly to your yeah. finger shape, and uh, unlike trying to carve that yeah. shape into a handle, you, you just 
wrap that around there and squeeze it with a rubber glove on. And you got it. Yeah. So you got a perfect fit for yourself. Now, this doesn't fit my hand at all. It's close, but he got bigger hands than I did. <clears throat> so here's a bunch of tooling dough. And if you're making a mold like one of these clamshell molds, the idea is to take this stuff and build up a thickness so you can do sandwich cores with it. <clears throat> Normally I put this against the surface coat and I try to make it even quarter inch, three eighths or whatever I'm shooting for. I try to keep it somewhat even. Um, if you don't want to actually build up the thickness but you need to fill it in there. So let's say you know you want to use glass but you, you don't want to go down in a 90 degree corner. Uh, you take this stuff here and you form the fillet so the glass will flow around the mold. But um, How long does it take to dry? It'll cure pretty quick. Um, if you put this in an oven at 150, it'd come out in about an hour and a half or less. Um, So once this B stages, you know, you can rub it and smooth it and fill it or make your mold. And then you can... Uh, you could grab your wife's uh, dough roller and roll, roll it out in a yeah. sheet and then put it on top of the mold. Yeah, you do. That's what they do. They, they actually roll it. And yeah, sometimes it's more beneficial depending if you have a big flat. You take two pieces of quarter inch music wire and roll it out that thick and then you got it. No, I can explain your stages here. You're talking about A stage, B stage, C stage. Now you know what you're talking about. I don't <laughs> well, think anybody else knows what this is going on. There. Well, it's it's one of these things where when I say stages, it's nothing real scientific in my mind. It's just <clears throat> when you take resin and it flows, like when I first mixed it in a cup, um, that's just like the raw A stage. When it B stages, <clears throat> what I'm thinking is, is the resin is sort of rubbery, but it's um, it'll leave a fingerprint if you push hard on it. But it's important when you start stacking <clears throat> these layers from surface coat to tooling coat to fiberglass that each layer chemically bonds to the next layer. So if you take the surface coat and you cook it off to where it's completely hard and cured and you try to go back over it with more epoxy, that epoxy won't actually cross link to it. So um, I'd say a B stage is pretty much when it'll leave your fingerprint or still be chemically reactive to the layer on the top of it more below. So you can just form it into a handle. Just split it in half. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. For... So I was telling John, I said, just take this, you know, this tooling dough. You could come up with a music wire form for your skeleton of your handle. Wrap this around that handle or that skeleton. And... Uh, You could mold the wire inside it. That's what I mean, yeah. Or let's you couldn't say, adjust it. No. <laughs> or let's say that you had a, a drill jig you wanted to make. You had this drill bushing, and you wanted it to be a certain angle where you could rig that thing up and hold it in that place somehow, and then you could just wrap this around it and pack it, and that would be your tool. You'd have a, a guy to, to drill a hole or... You can make all kinds of tooling and jigging out of this stuff too. So there's just a quick overview of tooling gel and some tooling board. And my brother won't leave me alone. <laughs> I 
would be <laughs> that would be real nice. What? You know, sit yeah. there and just hold it till it dries until it starts setting. Yeah. Or you could mix more in there, and it would actually um, be a little bit stiffer. Or wait till the B stages and then start molding it. You know, yeah, in the hand. yeah. But I think it's still a little bit green. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, go back in that cut. Start around. Here. Before you put your chop away, get that box and take some out of there. Gotcha. But remember, remember the deal. Okay. I gotta give you a bell crank. <laughs> Make your mold. Here. You spill it, you gotta clean it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spill that stuff. There you go. That's, that's three lifetime supplies. Oh, yeah. I remember getting some samples of some stuff. And it's stuff that I just needed a little bit. Well, they send out a big box like this of a sample. That ain't a sample. I, I, that's like a lifetime supply. I bought that. For, really? Fill it up? Yeah. I got a sample one time. It was a box half this size. I mean, I'm thinking, my gosh, I just thought I was making, <laughs> you know. That could pause the place. You could give out big samples of carbon fiber, like a 12 by 12 piece of carbon oh. fiber, 12 inch by 12 inch. And yeah. they got people calling up there and ordered Sample. samples, 10 or 15 samples, you okay. know, <laughs> all different weeds and yeah. sizes and everything. And they, they said, no, 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 no. They were actually production. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were kicking stuff out, weren't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this stuff is really a sandy, yeah. sandy type. When, when it dries, that hard piece that it has there, it's a real non-slip yeah. uh, surface to it. Uh, I'm not sure what the application would be, but it's just fun to look at. But I think this stuff's neat as far as building up thickness in a mold. In yes. a mold, absolutely. Oh, yeah, much better than throwing chunks of two by four in there or oh, something yeah. like that, you know. And you got something that's moldable and you can well, run it a half inch thick here, you can make it a half inch thick, right. quarter inch over here, quarter inch over there. And the, and the key with that is um, it's variable, different resins. And uh, I wouldn't, I know it looks like sand, but I wouldn't substitute sand for that. I, there's something about that that's chemically uh, set up for Yeah, it makes uh, it work with the uh, epoxy. And I don't think it was that expensive. I think I bought a 40 or 50 pound bag of it, which is like two lifetime yeah, supplies. Yeah, like he said, two lifetime supplies for us. Okay, the next thing I'm going to go over is foam. You don't want to substitute this stuff for microblades because it is heavy. It's, yeah. it's 10 times heavier than microblades ever foam. At least shut up this foam cutter, John. Not for that. Oh, you're out. all right, John. Would you bend me up this control arm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got to know what you want. Three quarter from the center. It has to be inch and a half total. Yeah. The dimensions right here it goes inside here so I can get the clips in there. Oh, so you want the, the angle, the L angles, uh, ID, yeah. ID of the opening? Yeah. Because I'm going to put clips on this one. Okay. That's the type of making. And I'm, I'm leaving off the uh, the hinge. The bushing's on there, but the hinge is on there. Or the hinge is off. It'll be fine.
want, want that wheel pan. You're going to take that and make that shape. Yeah, I'll make one. I got, um... Could you take it and mold it, could you? Well, I'll look at it. If not, I mean, I can mold it, or if not, I can make one out of this uh, tooling board. Spark. Um, matter of fact, it's good. Yeah, here's the hole right there. Yeah, yeah. The wheel. Uh, yeah. I'm already, already have a mold that size, as far as I'm looking at it. Oh. I'll make one of those. Alright, alright. It's only been sitting down there for two years in that box. And two years back in St. Louis. <laughs> Those are on there in the right direction and all that stuff. What? It looks like they are. They just point to the outside. Yeah. I'm just something so I can finish that piece up and get it up on set up on the shelf and out of the way. I finished the wing, the landing gear blocks up, or the landing gear ribs up, so I can. Uh, here's the tank we want to make too. Yeah, set that up there and we look at it. Hundred bucks for that. So I'm bending that back that way. You know, John, if you had a fuselage plug out of this tooling board and you made a fuselage mold and you decided you wanted to change something, all you have to do is go back and add or subtract from that tooling board to get your plug. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you could still modify it. So he wrapped this with shrink tape. You can see the ridges. Right. Yeah, but how thick is that outside layer? Um, <laughs> it's really thin. Oh, really? It's really thin. You can see the gray, and then it's probably 10,000 thick. I think. Yeah. He thought it was thick because. No. But that's a. Uh, What's what's causing all this dimension here? JV weld. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. It looks like JV weld, but it's um, it's a bonding. Some epoxy is made for uh, laminating. This is like a bonding epoxy, and it's one K. One K. Yep, one K fabric. Yep. So how expensive is that? How much material think there? Mm, not that much, really. I mean, when you buy, I mean, it's expensive, but when you, you know, doesn't take much to make this tank. The other thing with pre-preg, some pre-pregs come with more resin on one side or the other. And some pre-pregs come with saturated resins on both sides. And It's hard to tell. It's it's got a nice resin to fabric ratio. It looks like prepreg. I might be wrong, but uh, it's definitely wrapped with heat shrink tape. See, it started here, taped it, and then it wrapped it. Yeah, that's a it's a nice tank. It's beautiful workmanship. Well, wouldn't expect anything less that from a Honda, right? Under, right? Yeah. yeah, or somebody that's trained by him. What? Kaz is Honda. Yeah. He was an engineer, I think. Yeah. So if you had an aluminum mandrel, um, you put the shrink tape around it, pre preg it, put it in the oven. You could even bag it to make sure the tape doesn't slip. I don't know, but uh, make sure the tape doesn't slip. But you could even extend the mandrel out, roll it, the shrink tap tape past it and then clamp the tape down and make sure it doesn't come loose because if you put this in the oven the adhesive to hold the shrink tape, tape down might not hold and it would creep so when it would heat up it wouldn't get tight it would just start unwinding 
-hmm. So if you could physically clamp the tape out here and wrap it, clamp it here so it wouldn't move and clamp. I think he's making yeah. a piece two or three foot long and just cutting those yeah. pieces out of a big long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, instead of making one tank, it doesn't take much longer to make a section this long. And basically, it's just a long tube, and you slice it up. But the advantage of aluminum is it expands a little bit while it's heating up. And then once it cools, it shrinks, and it self-releases the part. Well, that's what we need to get it. Jungle Is there a the draft way. angle on that from one end of it to the other? You know, on the width of the tank? Looks like the back half is a little wider. Two hundred and thirty five thousand, two thirty six, hundred twenty three sixty, hundred twenty three sixty. Is this a control horn I made? No. Measure the width this way. If, the, if there is an angle, it's only a few thousands. Is, it, is there a draft on the thickness? This is set up for one and five eighths. I don't think so. I think it's all the same. Okay, that's close enough. It looks like the same to me. Okay. Well, the worst thing that could happen is we could make it all the same and we'd have a catastrophic lockout. And just, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's not a big deal. Just cut it off with a with a yeah. utility knife or yeah. put an angle in it. It wouldn't be the first lockout, would it? No. And it's just an experiment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we can do this, right? Oh, yeah. And make it just as nice, if not nicer. Yeah. Need to get heat shrink tubing. I got some. Yeah, we got we got it here. But they got it at Radical RC, too. Well, instead of using this tape, use heat shrink tubing so it doesn't look so crappy. Well, I don't know. Let's start with that first. Uh, there might be a reason why he went with that. And I think, you know, we used to do that years ago with eight track tapes or yeah. uh, VHS tapes or whatever. Yeah. That you can get them for a dime. You used to get them for a dime dozen people throwing them away as fast yeah. as you could shake a stick at them. Did you, did you use VGs or what was the going? <laughs> what do you think this end cap is? It, is the, it the same 10,000 uh, 1K? Uh, I don't know. It's um, maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit, but it feels pretty thin too. It, look, it looks like it's floated with a lot of resin on it. It does, doesn't it? It doesn't look like it's got a really tight. Like you set it up on the end like yeah. this. Yeah. And then did that fillet around there and then poured resin in and then cut it off or right. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I can see the scrag marks in it where you, I, you know. It doesn't seem to be too complicated to me. It's not. It's real simple, but sometimes with simple parts, you can get in the complicated mess. Well, I'm willing to try to make these because they this one took six months to get yeah. and a hundred bucks. Well, the other thing, I mean, if you're building another airplane, you say, well, I need a tank, but I need it this size. Um, if you can control the size of tank and you have options to have different sizes you know i don't see why you can't make it out of fiberglass you're not saving that much difference in weight fiberglass carpet not really especially if you use an s glass or something from these high like, performance glasses or something like that you don't really the strength isn't all that anyway right that's just you know I mean, carbon carbon's prestige <laughs> yeah i got a carbon yeah make it out of glass it don't matter to me i mean you could save a lot of money yeah, well, maybe. 
sometimes with pre prey you might not be saving as much as you think. All right. Now, see, John, when I did the uh, horn bending, I've always bent the horn before I've raised it. Really? Yeah, I, I get it just exactly the way I want it, and then if I screw it up, I don't have to worry about cut the horn off. We'll cut the wire and get the horn and do it over again. Um, but that's a neat. I saw that on the video when you were doing that. <clears throat> now you can you can drill these holes. You just get you a plate of aluminum and grind this right. out to get the pivot point clearance down yeah. there, and you can put these holes wherever you want to at. Now what I want to do is I want to make this where these pins. We'll slide, we'll screw in and out. Oh yeah, on a slider block? Yeah, on yeah. a slider block in there, and then I could just individually adjust them if you wanted them all set. Oh yeah. Push rod, you adjust this one out and this one then close. I know a guy who can do that for you. He's got a million <laughs> <laughs> he got, got a million, million everything. in his basement and all <laughs> that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh You pick it up, let's go. I see one of my tips got broke off already. I got a glue piece on. This one over here. Yeah, I didn't see put CA on it oh. yet. Just must have caught something and flipped off. Did we do that today? Yeah. You can take the tape off if you want. We didn't do that. Did I do that? No. That happened before you got here. I was looking at it. I just want to make sure I didn't. Wouldn't matter anyway. Nothing but wood. Let's <laughs> it. Yeah. These go backwards. <clears throat> wait a minute. John wrong. Oh, wait. You're going to bend them this way. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, no. I've done that with that dog leg slider. There's a couple times I've bent them. Looks right. <clears throat> what I like about this is this, this locks this arm wherever you want it. If you want to tilt it forward a little bit, you want to tilt it back, you want to straight up and down, whatever. Uh, Sparky does his pretty much straight up and down. This yeah. is basically straight up and down. Uh, the first side that you bend on, you got to put something on it, keep it from John, yanking, yanking the me. wire. Yeah. That's a nice. Beats mine. It needs a <laughs> stop on the end here. Yeah. But it can't turn. Oh, it won't. I put weights on it. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, they're in my trailer. There's there's your stop right there, that, that vice grip, John. Yeah. <laughs> We've got yeah, now, see, weights made, right here, Dan. I made these little clamps. There's. I can put over that wire. Underneath yeah. the bench right screw there. Screw down on here like this and lock the wires in. 100 pounds of weights, and if they ain't there, there's some here. Does it work, John? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, these are nice ones. These are tip weights. Yeah, for the guys who use that uh, urethane. <laughs> Load it up. Those are actually gauge blocks. Yeah, right? I was going to say, that looks I'm like more than a weight to me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to even go out and get my scrap weights. I like these. I like them gauge blocks. Give me that uh, an Allen wrench out of there. There's one size up from these. Should be on the front, right? Is this one mine here, John? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. I got a nice gauge roller. Show them how it works. You could use it for a ton of things. John was talking about ink lines because it's got the cork on the back. Yeah, it's got a cork back ruler. And you adjust it, let's say I want a, a eight inch line or a four inch line or a two inch line, whatever. You just put it right on the three, let's say the three inch and tighten this screw up. And then run this against the trailing edge and make a mark and then you, so you can't mess up. So <laughs> you can carry on, do what you want, whatever you're doing. John is a, uh, made Dan and I one of these, so thank you, John. Well, yep, thanks, John. All right. 
Now this foam cutting stuff, I know there's a million YouTube videos out there cutting foam. But you're going to see one like this. I think this one's got something to add. It's a little bit different. And this foam cutter was the Behind the drill press. This foam cutter was designed to do uh, stunt wings. Now it'll do any kind of wing as long as it'll fit inside the, uh, the cutting boat. The only time you have trouble with those super high delta tapers. That's a 1990 SIG box. Yeah, it is. I know. It's got a 1990 SIG box with a 1945 Variac in it. It's got an old, old Variac. Okay, so what I'm doing with this cutting bow, I run it off AC. And uh, make sure that you hold the wire and we're be barefoot on a concrete yes, floor. Barefoot on concrete, that's very important. <laughs> I got this foam out of my buddy's attic. He's an RC guy. I think it's 20 pounds density. No. <laughs> it's, it should be one pound, but. You see how much foam John's got? Yeah, I noticed that. He's got a lot in there, hasn't he? I didn't want to use any of his good foam, though. This is just a demo. Although, hopefully, this will be a usable wing when we get done. The guy asked, one of the guys asked, Chris Everson asked, can you, on that tooling board, can you use a belt sander? Yes. Or a disc sander on it? Oh, yes, yes. You can use files, sandpaper. Drill it? Oh, yeah, drill it. I don't know about tapping it. But, yeah, it's, it's, um... Easily machinable. The more of the DTO81 you put in there, the easier it is to sand and shape. But so if you get something that's just not quite exactly the way you want it, yeah, you can uh, sand it and grind it. And so and just wait till you see this foam cutter. This ain't it. This is just blocking it up right now. So hopefully this works out. I haven't cut foam in so long. Let's see, let me get the wire temperature, find out what I need. So right now I'm, I'm running uh, to get this bow to heat. I'm running uh, 50 volts through this thing. How did I know that? Huh? I just knew that. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I just rigged this bow up with an on and off switch here, so it makes it convenient so you don't have to turn around and turn the variac off. Um, you can run these bows with uh, DC current. John's got a power source over there. The only reason I'm using Variax is because that's what I had at the time. I picked these Variax up used at these ham fests. Um, ham radio guys like variable AC because of the, uh, not only would it lower the voltage to nothing, but it would step it up to, uh, well this one steps it up to 260 volts. And what they were doing on the tube radios, or I'm not into ham radio, but they actually crank that thing up over 110 volts so they could get more wattage somehow. Don't ask me how. Now when you got that thing cranked up all the way, be standing in water, holding on to the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make sure you're ground make sure you're grounded on the on the water heater or something. Yeah. I got one in the trailer. It's a square. You what are you going to use? Reliable on this? square. You're going to use a ball length back here. Okay. Well, bent a little offset. Offset. Well, it's bent offset. You got to have an offset for the ball length. 
right. You know what? When I left the house, I was worried about forgetting stuff. <laughs> but working in John's shop, it's almost like being in mine because I can stand right here and find anything I need. <laughs> I've been over to a friend's house before, worked in their shop. I don't know how they work in it. They you, got, you got my MO. I like where I can stand in one space. Oh, yeah. 360 reach every day. Well, it's better to go to the trailer to get my square. And I think, there's one right here. That ain't enough. There's another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I saw three or four there's over there. three of them. Three different sides. There's a T square on there that'll go all the way across the thing. Yeah. So, what I'm doing here is just trying to get a 90 degree here. I'm not going to get too crazy. I'm trying to get through this demo. Let's do that in a little bit. And like I was telling them at lunch break, if you're cutting a wing for cradles, um, it's real important that the cradles be accurate if you're going to fill and jig up a lost foam. Or join the halves. I think there's ways around it, but it's, it's good to have the foam flat on the bottom the cradle. So what I do, I just tap this foam block in, hit those lines. You really don't have to have a line all the way across the block. All you got to do is have some reference points. All right. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Okay, what are I you waist deep yet? No. <laughs> it does take long. <laughs> uh, I guarantee that. It doesn't take long. Okay, this is a this is a wing. That John and I came up with. He came up with a whole bunch of numbers. He took John Davis. John Davis. John's right there. Yeah, the other John. <laughs> the Spectrum, the Impact, and Billy Warwich is Juno or Juno, I think. He took the, all the measurements from all three airplanes and added them together, together and averaged them. So we called it the JD average of three. Um, one of the things I'm not sure about the span. Let me see. I'm not sure how long I want to cut this. Um, what's a normal stump core, John? 60 inches by 20, 28 inches, and then you get... 60 inch wingspan, so 28 inch wing, and then you got about two inches or two and a half inches for each tip. So, so 28 on one side, 27 on the other. So, you think I ought to cut each core 28? Yeah, that'll work. Uh, well, no, because your taper changes. No, uh, you got three quarters of an inch. Well, I'm just going to cut uh, an equal count. That's meant, you know. Yeah. If you're going to cut them equal panels, we can use a pound of tip weight. Yeah, but I'm just going to lop off a tip. See, 30 inches is 60. Yeah. So if you want to go 60 inch wingspan, you need 28 at least, or a little bit less. Okay, we're going to make it simple for this uh, demo. We're just going to go 28. So this is a. Uh, this is just like a freebie one. 
And there's other ways of doing this, but. On the way here, I realized I forgot my. This one's set right there. It's not that older. It's a sharpie. Ten point Oh wow, that's the exact same thing, John. <laughs> that's weird, now, isn't it? <laughs> foam you really don't want that wire smoking if the wire is melting the foam and it's not even touching it it's too hot it should be going through the foam slow enough where you should see a little stringers yes. coming off of a little looks like angel hair yeah. what you want is you want fuzz that's, that's what you want so now I think we got an accurate here now we just have to come up with double check. You got Four. a good end on that end. Yeah, I got a Not good. Thing, but... yeah, I think we're good, John. I mean, on that far one. Oh, yeah. Okay, what are we looking at here? One of the things that uh, I never knew till late in life is the reason they put the slop on these tape measures. Yeah, inside outside. Yeah. A little trivia. Yeah, people look at that thing and say, man, this is, these, these make these things cheap. Look at how much slop I got in the end of that tape measure. <laughs> yeah. That's what Sparky was saying, this slop here. Should be a little slot. This one's tight, but basically you got inside and outside dimensions. Oh, that's the is that a that's one of the cheap. That's just Stanley. Yeah, be. I know, but it's it's one of those discount China. discount Ben Stanleys. Yeah. It's, oh, it's got it in there. A little bit. You know what that little slot's for, right? Yeah. Go around a corner and put a nail on it. Nail head. Yeah. But if you're measuring from corner to corner, sometimes it helps, depending on. Yeah, nail head. I tell you, every time I measure with one that's been going on for forty some odd years, it seems like uh, 
you drop the end of that tape measure down there about 10 feet out away from you, what does it do? It'll catch in a crack oh, and yeah. you won't be able yeah. to shake it out of no. that crack. You'll have to take a screwdriver down to yeah. it. Yeah. Pry it out of that crack. Now, if you're trying to get it in the crack... You never do it. You know, <laughs> I've, I've run tape measures just by what you're talking about. Getting them in the, I could have had this done before I got here, but I didn't have time. I know this is blocking out a core is as boring as it gets. Um, well, I get to see it. You're not doing anything different. I got a little bit different yep. end templates. Uh, my bow's a little bit different. Uh, I guess my arms are a little bit are longer. Same thing. I've got a big three or four yeah. different size bows that I use. Remember, guys, when you cut that foam out of there, you have to have the tail end of your templates opposite. <laughs> what? If you don't, you yeah. don't end up with you end up with a trailing edge oh, with yeah. a taper. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what they got to say. Nope, nothing. Can you guys hear us okay? Are we still online? Yeah, things are still up and rolling. This is a boring. Nobody's got any comments on block and foam. Yeah, boring. But wait till you see this crazy contraption. <laughs> the big mousetrap. I should have brought my light. I was going to. Not your first radio. I don't know why I reached around there and grabbed that. <laughs> <laughs> now here's where you sort of check your accuracy. Um, see, it's just a little off, not much. It's not enough to worry about. You're like a hair. Yeah. Mm. What would be a good entry level foam cutter that is pre built and relatively easy to use? You can go on uh, eBay or Amazon and just type in foam cutter. It's just a bow with a. Uh, some, buy some nip, nickel crown wire or some music wire. Now, are they talking about the bow or to cut the actual whole wing? The whole wing. What would be a good entry level foam cutter? No, that'd be like feather cut, wouldn't it? Yeah, you could get a feather cut machine. It comes with a. Oh, I probably can't see that. No. I'm not set up. A feather cut machine comes with a power supply that's like this. Plugs in regular iron tin. Uh, it's variable, variable ratio. Uh, you know, however long your bow is, is how much power you got put into it. Comes with wire. They make a starter kit that comes with a little bow. Uh, which, boy, their bows are really nice. But they're sort of sort of pricey when you uh, buy them separate. It's the same thing, I guess. They come with a real nice bow. Uh, you know. Uh, extruded aluminum and steel and weights and door and pivot points and a little wheel and all that stuff. But this is a little bow and it's hardly big enough. I mean, you could barely get this 28 inch panel out of it. And if it's much thicker than that, you won't get it out of it. Um, but this will work for the most part. Or, and you're going to want to get some extra wire. You gotta have extra wire because this stuff does break after a while. Then you can just do like this and make a bow 
quarter inch music wire drill a hole in here to an angle this like a one by three a furring strip doesn't have to be anything spectacular string your wire up on it put a little wheel on it believe me you got to have this wheel what that wheel does is when you're using a feather cut it allows the taper in your wing it allows that go up back and forth as it comes through the foam. Um, you know, Dan's got, Dan, Dan his works a little bit different. Same principles, it, it's a you know, hot wire. Um, this, with the feather cut, you're gonna see you cut one side at a time. Dan's method, you get both cuts at once. That's the idea. I really like the idea of that. Now here's the ticket on this stuff. You may get this stuff, but you don't buy pre-made templates. <laughs> They're not out there. You got a 16 phenolic and you got to make your own templates. As you can see here, Dan's got a whole bag of different templates, just like I do. I got a whole stack. You can use Formica. Phenolic um, oh, is much nicer yep. than Formica. Yep. Splatter. Get an eighth inch, eighth inch phenolic. All right, it might, it might be 16th inch phenolic. <clears throat> Uh, I bought that one we're cutting a junior wing. And measure twice and cut once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, with John, he's got good plate glass here. Um, let's see, what am I going to do here? I got to get a left and a right. No, well, this is your 90 degree corner yeah. here. Yeah. So I'm going to try to reference and it will all be the same. I want to keep my bottom on the bottom, the top on the top. So let's put a T for top. You want a better marker than um, I think I'm all right. So we got a three-inch block. Let's split it down the middle. And it's, it's not super critical if it's exact center, as long as you keep the top and top and the bottom and the bottom. Now this thing here, um, it's an adjustable height gauge with a marker on it. And... Where it goes? Let's see. So the first step, and John's got it here, is glass that's on a plane. So this center line, well, I'm transferring the glass to the, the foam core. Um, one of the things I sanded at the bottom of this thing, I made sure that the core wasn't rocking. You don't want it to where it's rocking. If it's rocking, you want to make sure that it's flat. It doesn't matter if it's level, just make sure it's flat. So what I've done is I made a 360 line around this core, and that's the center line, and that'll stay on the core throughout the process.
make sure the glass is clean, no bumps, glue, and then make sure that the bottom of your gauge is Yeah, it's easier to rig than the chicken market. Yeah, so I keep these for using machining. Yeah. Instead of using that ink. Yeah. You put on there, just use this magic marker. <laughs> yeah. Drive your lines in that. You gotta have top because the top reference, if you're off just a little teeny bit on that little marking pen and you mark them both as the same side, you flip one over it, it'll change your your layout height. I think you said something about that. Never hurts to repeat it. <laughs> so here's a bag of nails. And ah, this, yeah, the dreaded nails. Some of these is, is probably drilled specifically for those pins. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, mean, I might be one short on the size I need, who knows. Or the nails that's had a, a little bit of file work done to them or yeah. <laughs> to get the little burrs off the top edge of them. All right, trailing edge, trailing edge. And I install this template by siding the center line of the template. When I get done cutting this wing, I'm going to go over some of the little intricacies, intricacies of these templates. Um, one of the things I noticed with John's templates, like I did, he scribed, he scribed the lines into the phenolic or formica, in my case. If you draw the line with tape, I mean a marker or pen or you actually mark it with ink, it can wear away. Once you scribe the line, it's there forever. Okay, there's the tip. Let's root up. I don't push the first pin all the way down in case I need to change it a little bit and wiggle it. This, uh, this wing block is cut wrong. It's uh, too narrow to tip and cord. It's not going to come out right, but we're going to do it anyway. It'll be fine. Put a piece of wood on it, sand it around. Well, it's going to do for demo purposes. What we're going to do with this wing, we're going to give it to an RC flyer. You leave the excess out the back? Huh? You leave the excess out the back? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always do. If I get them off a little bit, I'll leave yeah. the excess on the back because <laughs> you can sand the trailing edge a little bit if, yeah. if it just comes out a little bit thicker. Yeah. Leading edge is more crucial. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. let's, let's budge a little bit. Let's see. Let's make this thing really look good. John was mentioning, and so was Bob. They're wrapping these leading edges, and that's the way to go for weight. There's no lighter way than wrapping it. We we're talking about how to actually wrap a leading edge with this template. And I think by looking at it, you'd almost have to um, make a new template. Make a new template, ideally, yes. And you, after looking at it, we pretty much decided you, you were going to have to um, do a little sanding anyway. He's got a template that it's uh, pretty much dead on <clears throat> for that leading edge. This one here, you'd have to extend it, 
extend the block and then re reshape the leading edge. All right. So I think a, even even with that, with the double wire, where it doesn't doesn't come come out. Now this is made for like a flat piece of yeah, wood. Right. Uh, for here's what we do for molded leading edge. We just yeah. cut from the the spar line on the airplane and, and cut a, a basically another template. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then I glue some stiffening wood onto the bottom of it just to keep it straight because it just that foam will just bow all over the place on you if you down. And then that's actually got some sheeting on it all being molded. Yeah. And it looks like he's got yeah. what saran wrap there or something yeah, like plastic. Sar yeah, saran wrap just kind of glue it and stick on it. Yeah. 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 Mm. So these templates are designed for a, a strip leading edge, but that that's the uh, trick way of doing it. Okay, are you over there now? Yeah. Okay. So. The light's not quite as good over there, but let me uh, pull the camera back, maybe. Sorry, I had to go. So you're hanging it up a little bit. Yeah. Blocks to get on there. Wait a minute. Maybe it'd be a better idea to look inside here. You can come around this way, Spark. Now, before you... No, I'm not going to start until you tell me. Well, uh... We need to uh, get the camera situation. I can't do that. Yeah. Or you can hold the camera while I cut it. I still couldn't tell. You can't. There's no side of that right on that pole. I guess that's going to be all right. Does it look okay? You know what? Explain it. It yeah. looks like a trapeze inside there. The guy that was sitting there asking about an easy startup way, you can go online, you can go on, if you've got any kind of electrical experience whatsoever, you can make a power supply for one of these bows out of it. It is basically a, a 12 volt car battery charger with a light dimmer switch hooked to it to vary the output. Uh, of the charger, uh, it's sort of glorified. It's done a little bit cleaner, you know, with the commercially bought ones. But I build them. There's tons of different ways to do it on YouTube. Oh yeah, I see that. Um, as far as the bows go, the, there's they they got instructions on there on how to make bows out of the furring strip and a couple pieces of. Uh, I, I use quarter inch music wire, but you could use a little bit thinner than that. Uh, 330 seconds or something like that. Uh, I use nickel chrome wire. Dan uses music wire for his cutting wire. Uh, and you're using a Variac, I think you've got quite a bit more, more power than what I've got. <laughs> Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll drive anything. As far as the amps and all that stuff goes. Uh, okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. A quick explanation here. Can you wait a minute? Let me make, can you guys hear them? Can you hear Dan okay? He's getting ready to uh, explain this. Back to 25 people. 
Can you hear Dan? Go ahead and say something. Hey, can you hear me? Over here on this phone cutter. I can hear you, but, nope. but they, I don't know if they can or not. I'm waiting for somebody to type okay. in the chat box. Okay. So I've got two cutting bows here suspended on glass. So there's glass plates top and bottom. These two bows open and close independently, and the tension on these bows are rubber bands. And okay, good. as the bows open and close, what supports them are ball bearing on plate glass. So you can see there's a little play. Um, it's self-centering. And when I turn this variac on, this core is going to come vertical. And just like the cutting bow over there, what you want to do is just get enough voltage in there to cut super slow. You'll hear it sort of sizzle. Yeah. It'll sort of sound not, not like bacon frying, yeah. but you'll hear an ever so slight sizzle to it. So I try to go as slow as possible. If you pull too fast on these things, what can happen is the wire can bow and then you won't get a consistent cut from front to back. You'll, you, you could get a thin spot or a thick spot in it. Or you get a wire lag, what I want to call wire lag in the center of the wire. Yeah. It won't happen on each end of it. It'll happen in the center of it where it'll go. Just like 18,000 flying wires. Yep, yep, just like looking at your lines. So the wires I'm cutting with are 14,000 pound or 14,000 diameter music wire. What's you know, the, the secret on this cutter as far as the tape or root to tip is this door. If you look at this door, as the door is falling down, there's uh, it's pulling from two fulcrum points, and the ratio of the distance from the fulcrum point at the root and the tip are offset. So that's how you're getting the taper. Um, right, at, right before lunch, we came over here on this foam cutter and we messed around to get the, uh, the rope and the, the ratio right. Um, after this wing is cut, I'll, I'll back up a little bit and show you more on the cutter and how I set it up. It's so sweet to cut both sides at one time. Okay. So I let it cool for a few seconds so I don't nick the leading edge up. Um, the tape was to keep the shucks from uh, the cradle from flopping off the core. That's why I put this tape here. This is the first wing I've cut in probably 15, 20 years. We'll go back. If you want to do, you know, show them, go back to your uh, blocking station and open it up. I'll switch cameras okay. back over there. Maybe. Yeah, hold on. Oh, come on. Okay. So you know how you open a mold up and it's like Christmas. Every time, you yeah. just don't know what you're gonna get. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that! Beautiful board. The other side should be just as nice. There it is. Absolutely. Both sides at once. Uh, gotta make sure I don't lose the top mod. Oh, it's dead nut straight. 
So that's the magic. The, the cutter has both sides um, referencing referencing off of the uh, center line on John's table. And uh, hopefully, I've got a drop jig. I know John and uh, Sparky put together a drill, and that thing's really slick. It's, uh, it's a neat way to bust a hole through a core, and it's quick. But I'm going to show you a couple things that I've done in the past. I thought, well, I'm, I'll probably make a drill jig eventually, but... Don't heat up a ball bearing and drop it down. You don't know where it is. Is that what you did, a ball bearing? It, I've done ball bearings, steel rods, uh, everything, where I took a, a hinge yeah. and bolted it to a board and dropped the rod, heated up, and it get about halfway, and then it stopped and get stuck. Okay. And you have to pull back out, heat back up again, and drop it in there again. I thought that was a pain in the butt, plus all the smell. Right. So I just opted for the mess of drilling a hole. Right. Well, I'm going to show you my way. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not mm. stinky because it melts its way through. Mm. But all the times I've done this, John, I've never had one not come out where I wanted it. Now, that was with my old drop jig. And I didn't lack on accuracy on mine. Yeah. Did they hang what up? I lacked it on was it would hang it up. would get cold. Okay. You know, halfway through, unless you heated that thing up absolutely uh, cherry red. Well, that's what I do. Um, it didn't have enough energy, you to know, to make it all the way through. Right. Okay, let's uh, run this sucker through there, and then we'll be ready to knock some foam out of the center of this wing. Take sure you get it on the right side now. Yeah. I don't want a bunch of scrap here at my feet. <laughs> Show them how the, the uh, bows separate. Okay. okay. Camera's on now. I think um, yeah. when I load this thing up, um, these bows, see how they're floating on plate glass. Now, I'll show you the ball bearings here in a little bit. Um, there's two posts with two ball bearings on each bow on each end. Um, these bows open and close. And what keeps the tension against the template are these rubber bands. So you can see how these bows spread out. There's a rubber band right here. Sort of hard Your wife is watching movie. again, Dan. You must be you're the movie star. Oh, oh, man. She just wants to make sure. You I mean, ain't out drinking. You're, world, you're yeah. world famous, man. We're not at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I have my channel. Gunslinger.com or whatever the channel was. Well, I don't know how much you, trouble you can get in with a couple teetotalers because I quit drinking about 17 years ago and Sparky quit drinking about 30, 30 years ago. <laughs> don't miss it either, do you? <laughs> no, don't miss a dang thing. Okay, so what I do, I get some tension on this thing and I sort of center it. Stop. Put your string in the pulley on your right hand side. All right. We'll make sure. I'll always double check that. Okay. Thanks for catching that, Sparky. He's checking to see that the wire, he's got a yeah. center line on this, so he's going to check to make sure that the wire is right there on the equal center. on both sides of the line. Yeah, you got to make sure it looks right. Dan is the man. Tom T-Bone says it. Well, I don't know about that, but we're cutting foam, cooking with AC, right? I told you my old friends were uh, top-notch modelers. The nice thing is, once you cut one wing, I mean, the, the power's there, the, the cables are there. Um, took a few minutes, probably five, ten minutes to set it up with the taper.
Jingle bells, jingle bells, ding, ding, ding. all the way. Now, I bet I could have run my fingernail over those templates and cleaned them. You know, I wax mine. Mm -hmm. I bought, uh, we bought some paraffin uh, for candle making or whatever, yeah. a little box of it. Makes a difference. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can just take that stuff and just rub it on there like a, you would a uh, crayon would work for that matter. Yeah, partial. Uh, or candle, uh, but we bought some, you know, just clear white, clear, yeah, uh, paraffin because we, we didn't want any color on it, you know, where it might stain something. And yeah, it sure does make it slide. You gotta reapply it every which stitch, but just like anything else, you know. <clears throat> so when I made this cutter 20 odd years ago, 25. Um, it was all made out of stuff you could buy at a hardware store and a hobby store. Basically, you're looking at wing nuts, uh, three-eighths. Uh, hardware store cut me the plate glass, you know, anybody that cuts eighth-inch glass for windows. Um, all this stuff can be had at a hardware store. You could probably use some tempered masonite for that too, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. Instead of the glass, if you. Yeah. Um, I like the glass. The I glass don't think it went all the way through yeah, it again. Yeah, it's guaranteed free. Now, what, what kind of yeah. ball bearings you got on the end pieces there? You got. Well, it's hard to get the ID. RC car bearing. Yeah, as long as an eighth inch wire will go through it with not too much slop, and then you put sleeves like copper tube or brass tubes up the center. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter if they're centered as long as they roll good. Um, it's like RC car bearings. Yeah, we have some wheel bearings that yeah. are eighth inch. They were a flange, um, a small flange yeah. bearing. The plans for Dan's cutter will be available PDF for sale. <laughs> He's putting the pressure on me. <laughs> well, the SIS are plans available for Dan's cutter. So, so it's slick. This one. I had an exit at the tip before the root. That one's a little off. Yeah, but that's all well within sandable range. But it's uh, pretty close to demo. I'm wondering if the pulley was on the, or the thing was on the pulley on the first cut. That's one of the things you got to double check. You got to make sure that um, your pulley and your cables are all riding up. Yeah, that feather cuts the same way because yeah, yeah, you had to hold that wire will jump right out of there. Uh, there was something with core on these things that now, if you're going to build a fully sheeted foam wing, um, which most guys do if they're happen to do this um, a lot of guys will go ahead and sheet the wing right now and then triple core it um, when doing that um, you can you can weigh it down with a ton of weight you know or, or you don't have weights you can vacuum bag them in the shucks um, so this was sort of what I was talking to John about with his drop jig and I made this one because I couldn't find my old one and I was trying to go by memory and I hope 
that the ceiling's high enough for it to go in. Yeah. If not, we can lower it. The ceiling? <laughs> yeah. We're gonna know we're gonna raise the ceiling. We're just gonna move this. Yeah, drill a hole, make sure nobody's standing in the room Bar above you. <laughs> yeah. Barb will say, John, what's his rod sticking up through the floor? Um so let's see, I got some templates over there for the the coin. And let's see here. These templates are as critical. And I think I think it's gonna work out with that rod right there. It'll be all right. So these templates, I just use straight pins also. You know, sometimes I look at this stuff I made and I'm looking at it and thinking, why did I do that? What, why didn't I use the same pins? I got stuff I was trying to figure out 25 years ago. Because every now and then you hit the same hole or just off on the old hole for the other template and yeah. it yanks the pin out of whack and... I put a series of holes in all my templates. I drill the heck out of them just in case yeah. I, yeah. I misalign Miss it. Yeah. And I can just pull that out and realign it and stick it in a different hole and you're good to go again. I already mm -hmm. always start at the tip because the tip is uh, it's a harder spot to hit. Um, So I lower this thing down and get an eyeball on it. And basically I put it right where I want it to start. Right there. And the pin I've got sticking out of this jig sticks up and that's what this wing is sitting on. So when I set this jig up, I set it up to when this thing drops, it comes out where that pin's at. Not exactly, but pretty close. So he moves right the exit point of this hot wire. And we'll raise this up to the ceiling here. Like John said, this thing gets about cherry red. where the pin was. That's a good sign. That was the first drop. <laughs> I was worried. Make go. sure you inspect that end of that real good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how much it will take you longer. Hold on to it. <laughs> see, see if uh, it's cooled off yet. <laughs> so I start at the root and what I do, I set that pin wherever I want it to come out. I set the wing on the pin. Right. It's not critical. I, I like your little it. clamping method there of holding the core in Yeah, that's just in a place. Quick quick uh That's better than drilling. Faster than Well, when I do a uh, stab or something really small like a half A wing, I needed a, a small hole. Like John says, you gotta smell them. Now that one hit the pin. So that's why it stopped. This thing went all the way through there and it stopped on that pin, so I knew it was on there. That was like a bullseye. And if it ever stops on that pin, just give it a poke. And the same thing. Sorry. You normally got enough play in there as far as the cutout opening to. Oh yeah. It won't totally waste your core. One of the things I do do with this wire, I take polishing compound, 
and I polish this thing. It's music wise. You could probably use drill rod, might be better, but I take polishing compound and I slick this thing up. Mm -hmm. And it probably wouldn't hurt to lap that brass bushing out a little bit. Okay, this next part, um, when I saw Sparky and John over here corn this thing out, both of them were doing it, and that's a good way of doing it. But I came up with something. I sort of let gravity do the work. Um, some of this music wire, I think I was using. This was a fishing leader. This was 14,000 stainless steel. And I'm pretty sure it's high temper. And it still looks really good. Some of the music wire I had is 14,000. I got um, what speed plane do they run on 14,000? I don't know, but they had it. He sold it to me. The speed, I don't know what they were doing with it. I got it from Ned, though. Is he 14 or 17? Hmm. That's got to be a small uh, speed plane. Yeah, well, it's a Foxbird. It's, it's a mongoose or something in that size range or smaller. Or, you know, they, they'll take a, a B speed plane or something like that and put a Fox motor on it. it you put 14,000 on a D speed, that it up it by about 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah. You remember when they used to run D speed over at Fort Benjamin Harris? Yeah. I'm a badass. Hey, you hardly ever see them around here. You hardly ever see them run D speed. They, They'll run a lot of Ds. And, 1995, uh, Fort, Fort Benjamin Harris. They had a contest there. Everybody was there. I mean, Jack Sheets, uh, uh, Will Davis. Um, John Davis. Um, yeah. Montagina of Hughes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All and those guys. Even, uh, and then for stunt flyers, the guy that uh, built the Orion or whatever, what's his name? Coach Kent. What's the guy's name who built the beautiful, mm -hmm. that beautiful red airplane? Uh, he lives here in Ohio. He lives in her. By stunt. By stunt? Yeah. Builds beautifully. Best builder at all. Oh, um, Reinhardt? Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah, Reinhardt. Joe Reinhardt. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. Hey, Jack was there. I was there. That's when I had the Jimmy Cassell airplane. I would like the flow in that airplane. It flew real good. It was light. It was 50, 59 ounces. Super Tiger 60. Pretty crappy finish, though. Yeah. Casal uh, wasn't much of a finisher. Remember Raul? Who? Raul. He was a New Yorker. He was a really good guy. He was a sweetheart. Uh, speed fire. He he was actually a doorman at like the Waldorf Astoria and big high end place. Well, this is the cell airplane, the spectrum I'm talking about. The blue was so thin. Yeah, the two of the color scheme we painted the same way. One who flew at the world to wherever I had told them. They're both in the pavement. Now, I didn't crash them. John Garrett crashed one, and, and uh, the guy's damn something or other. St. Louis guy crashed the other one. I traded a quarter scale. Uh, that I <laughs> Is that our plane? It's amazing. It was a quarter scale Cub built the real way. It had a cover all on it. With, you know, it was built back. So it looked like a real thing, or a very scale. Yeah, our cover all fabric. I built some ringmasters with that stuff. Oh, boy, talk about some tanks. <laughs> that stuff had the glue over the entire surface of it. Stuff. They said it was fuel proof, but no, nah, it ain't fuel proof. Right out of the package, you got the big one. You core on that thing there? Yep. I'm looking for these little, uh, I had some little ends. I had them wrapped in plastic, and I'm not sure what I did with them. They're little music wire loops. There was a bag. It was on the floor. 
Uh, I don't know, every song. Yeah, they're like uh, little round music wire loops. And they're no big deal. I mean, uh, Hope you guys have enjoyed the, uh, the show today. We put in two, I think we've got four hours in, I think. It's taking all day to do four hours of video. Yep. One hour and 56 minutes. We're going to continue the way until, until we're done here. Because it's getting late in the day, and I'm sure Dan doesn't want to drive home at midnight. So, I might just improvise and string this up a little Some uh, brown nose pliers. I'll tell you what, John, you have any little eyelets? Those little uh, lead out eyelets? Yeah. Let me have one of those. Those little brass. Brett, you know where they're at. They're in there. <coughs> Uh, that music bar you could bend around the end in it. Oh, wow, yeah. I need to get you. Well, I don't know where they are, John. I, they're, in, they're in the top or the second drawer. No, I looked in here and they're not there. Maybe the second one. I looked in the second one and they're not down there. Let's see this. Wow. I'll put it like a perfect radius on it. One. Oh. Yeah, I have to go upstairs. I got some. I'll go upstairs. That's all right. Hey, John, is this trap, this means bar, in that little tube? Yeah, that's just for whatever. Here, I'll make one out of this. I'll show you. That's a pro sorry about that guys. That's the problem with having all these wires around here. We got more wires around here and yeah, hey, we got some wire. Talking speed. The best live in best lives in Cleveland. Carl Dodge. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Barry Tippett. Yeah. Right name of the cowboy got out of Texas. Old, real old guy. Uh, I always see him. Really old guy. He's not flying anymore. I think he had a stroke or something. Now. The date begins with a C. That's right, up here. There's Carl, too. Yeah, Carl Dodge. He was Sorry, not Carl. Not Carl. Um. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Please consider yeah, becoming a. I've been trying to remember his name for a year and a half now. Hey, remember? Always wore a cowboy hat with a rattlesnake head on it. Yeah. Smoked a big old cigar. Do you have a <laughs> Dremel cut off where I can knock these ends off? Yeah. No, we don't have a Dremel here. <laughs> there's one, one hanging over there, there's one in this drawer, there's two in that drawer over there. I'll go with the one hanging. Right here, this one's better. That one takes a piece of wire. Right 
Make sure I plug the cord in, not the wire. Yeah. In for a real wide awakening. Not a wide one. It won't take you long to inspect it. That doesn't need too much except those little burn marks on your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I made up a couple of these at home, trying to save some time. Didn't work out. There was a bag that was laying on the floor, and I saw it, and I stuck it somewhere, and I, I didn't even look what was inside of the little bitty bag. Yeah, that's all right. It's probably in that box right there with all the mold. Yeah, it's all right. This isn't anything really, really major. This is just a little water. Yeah, you can take it with you. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> take more with me? You can take a little. Why? You're making there with you. Oh, this little wire thing? You talking about this wire thing? <laughs> so, but, you know, there's a wire that's born every second. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you a story. You laugh at this. You know how you talked about a wing, SB11 wing was the outside of your boot? Uh huh. Yeah. Shoe. Shoe. Well, there's a guy up at Red Wing, Red Wing <laughs> Boat Company, right? And this guy, he flew model airplanes, but he worked in the boot factory. So he goes in the office and he sees this guy in the, in the boot factory. And he's got, got this CAD system, this computerized drawing of this boot. He said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm designing the Red Wing boot here. He said, um, John. Turn that camera up just a little bit. He said, yeah, I'm designing this boot. He said, well, I don't know why you're going through all that trouble on that computer to make that boot. He said, I went out there and traced that boot around my airplane wing. And he said, it's the exact same thing as my airplane wing. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it to the right there. <laughs> Up and down, right? Yeah, it should be good. It'll be right there. about right in here. Yeah. So this is one of those stupid little things you got to make that takes 10, 15 minutes. So I got to make a little loop. I you need to make them little aluminum things, though. I could be able to just slide over the end of it. Yeah. So that's what I need. Nice tight go there. So all this is doing is it allowing me to uh, take this 14 thousandths wire off of the bow. And I've got to take it off the bow in order to feed it through the core. Yep. And I got to put it Every through the magic. Yep. Uh, sort of like that. Can when you cut down through the leading edge? When I cut that off right here, some wire side cutters. Is that yeah. what you're looking for? Yeah, you got, yeah, cut that for me, John. Can you cut through the leading edge and the trailing edge and just go around and then out the same hole? Yeah, no, I've never done that. That's what Sig did. They, yeah, they used to just, if yeah. you're using a sheeted leading edge like this where you're putting a piece on there, you can just go plunge in. cut here and plunge cut in the back and put a little piece of one thirty second inch balsa wood or something yeah. in there uh, to fill that curve. And yeah. that'll get you two of the cuts pretty quickly. But you start to lose accuracy on the core. And then also, what I like to do is sheet the wing before I ever core it. Normally, when I do these wings, yeah. I vacuum bag uh, sheeting on this thing while it's in one piece. Right. That way it won't crush on Right. Me. And even, even vacuum bagging one-pound foam, it's only like seven inches of mercury. Now, I assume it's going to take half the voltage. Um, now, this is three times for each panel that you got to do this. Correct. So, yeah. So, let's see. I, I usually cut this. Oh, you know what? It's always good to hook it up, to hook up some power. Yeah, it typically helps. 
clip that on there for me, John. And while you're doing this, test that with your tongue. Yes, it's, it'd be like a 9-volt battery. You should feel a little tingle. A little tingle. And if you got a real good friend, he'll sort of crank that up a little bit. <laughs> Make you giggle. All right. Doesn't matter what these pieces look like, they're going to be thrown away anyway. I normally cut at the root first, so I, that takes longer to do. Um, the other thing I try to do is slide it back and forth to get it to release. Yeah, I need to I'll cut this thing at the root. Uh, like I said, you don't do it for 15, 20 years. Get what you did the last time you did it. So what I try to do is shut it off, slide it back and forth. Otherwise, it'll stick on there. Yeah, it'll stick every time. Yeah. So I slide it with that one. So I use gravity. Turn the wing around so you can get the root. Yeah, I'll get it right this time. Um, I try to use gravity to allow the Core to work itself around the wire. You did it wrong again, didn't you? No, I'm all right. I got it. I'm on the route. Okay. Now they got the very exit at the right temp. Should be good. All right. I can see the smoke. <laughs> She's yeah. just smoking. Yeah, we got her turned up there. Run a little hotter cut here. Yeah. yeah. And I can probably turn it down a little bit. Only thing it does when you run a hotter cut, it makes the curve a little bit bigger. Yeah. Hmm. And it's not that critical. In, or, you know, inside the core. Way. Yeah. See what I did. I uh, what I did. The mistake I made. I needed the root to be at the same end of the uh, as the wire. No, the same end as the disconnect. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? That's right. I'm gonna heat it up and uh, let that slide a little bit. I'll shut it down. Here. Okay. Don't forget to put your template back on. Yeah. Depth stuff. Depth stuff. So. <laughs> like I said, I got looking at this stuff, John. I'm thinking, what was I thinking? You know why they do it that way? Okay, we're going to this time. Yeah, you're right. Right. Other end, template on the other end. I know. Yeah, but he's got to turn these posts around. Yeah. He's got to have the takeoff point on this end. Yeah. Well, guys, give him a little slack. He hasn't cut any wings in 15 years. Uh, we do the same thing, come over here and have them cut a foam core in a year or more. And you feel like a real rookie, man. <laughs> oh, I am a rookie right now. Hunt's looking at this and go, man, I'd have had 10 cores cut right now. <laughs> well, he does, but he does it every day and he does it by eye with... No machine or anything. 
Yeah, we're not in the business to be doing it. Makes a difference. You get good at that stuff when you keep doing it all the time, day after day after day after day. And Bob's, Bob's a good cutter. He's been cutting wings longer than anybody else. Oh, yeah, he cut all sorts of RC wings. 40 years, I mean. Hundreds or thousands of wings that he's cut. Chris Ricotti, he used to make wings. He cut some pretty nice wings. I got a couple of his cores in St. Louis. I, I just quit using foam because, I, you know, it's an ounce. You're giving away an ounce. At least. <laughs> if you get somebody who doesn't know how to use the glue right, you can get a lot more than an ounce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think... Um, when I was doing them, I, I saved a lot. I don't know much by vacuum bagging the skin down, the, the sheeting. I don't know how you could save any the way we're doing it. There's no glue on it. Well, well, yeah. I mean, like Randy said, nothing wider than air. And the more air you can get in the structure, the better. We're using z epoxy. Put it on the wood. Squeegee it off. Dry it off with a paper towel. Looks like there's none on the wood. Yeah, it's actually pretty much dry to the touch. <laughs> I don't know if I got this right this time. Take one ounce of heat and epoxy to do it. Hey, Richard. Thanks for stopping by. You got to have the big end opposite the release. Yeah, I'll get it right. <clears throat> so the big end has to be on the stationary wire. Yes. Feather cut machine, it does the same thing. Yeah. It does identical. Yeah. It'll burn on them and lock up on that little core piece and. You're stuck. Yep. About every time you do it. I always watch the root versus the tip because the root takes longer than the tip to get to the template. So I know if I cut, I know if the root is where it needs to be, the tip is because there's less room to cut. Right. So as this thing rotates, it's, I like it. It's a good concept. You've got everything in one piece. You're cutting all your cutting equipment's all in one right spot. It doesn't take two guys to do the job. I wonder. If there's got to be a way we could make that thing where that was horizontal instead of vertical. What do you mean, the cutting both sides? Yeah. Um, you probably wouldn't want it because the wing will rock. Okay, when, when you pull it vertical, the wing doesn't rock. Um, and what I mean by that, um, as you know, the, the, the wire isn't perfectly straight going through that cord. It might have a little lag in it. If you're going horizontal, there's no way of keeping the wing from doing this. When you pull it vertical, gravity keeps it from doing this. Okay. So I've already thought about that. Yeah. So I couldn't figure out a way um, to, to go horizontal. I already um, thought about it and I couldn't figure it out just because of that reason. Um, so there it is, it's just a all that core. Triple cord, bound cord, voila. Let's see how much it weighs. That's the important part. Um, let's guess. Ask a... Is that one pound per cubic foot pound? I don't know. Chime in there and ask everybody what they think that weighs. And let them guess and Let's give them about two or three place. minutes and whoever guesses the right closest, and if they want to pay the shipping, they can get it. You guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. A little contest yeah. within the... Hey, it's not the best core out there, but if you want a free one, if you guess the, uh, the number of what that weighs, and you're the closest one, 
you want to pay the shipping. I don't know what it would be. You can, or if you're local. Well, listen, the core will cost you probably fifty bucks yeah. or net, or you know, yeah. Well, plus shipping, you know, so probably seventy bucks, seventy-five bucks. Or if you if you know somebody yeah. local, and this is this is a nice core. This is. <laughs> uh, Okay, guys, you got a few minutes to uh, get your numbers in. How much does each core weigh? We'll just do it for one core. Yeah, I mean. It's an equal panel weight, yeah. so both of them are the same size. 28 inches long. What's the root? About 10 and a half? Mm. 10 and a half and 9 or something. Ah! Let's put a ruler on her there real quick. Ten inches. Okay. Seven and three quarters. Chris says, seems like feather cut is not in business anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the cord. That's typical. This wing is two and three eighths inches thick. The root. Did you did you guys what happened there? Oh. Did, did you guys hear that? I, I see no numbers up there. We're gonna weigh this thing. And the guy who comes closest to the weight is gonna get it if you wanna pay the shipping. So let's have a guess on what the uh what this wing panel weighs? I can tell you right a now. A half of a wing. The foam core, just the core, just the foam. Without the without the cores yeah. in it. As it's sitting right there. Right here. Huh? Oh. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to see how close I can. Well, yeah. Actually, it's more than that. It's, uh, Sparky's hefting a lot of stuff. He's probably pretty accurate. He knows. See, the, the thing is, Sparky, he can actually feel it. The guys out there can't. I just want to see if my weight, my scale was working. We can we can double check it with the gram scale. I know we know how much that one weighs. What's, what's it weigh, guys? <laughs> he says five ounces. Nope. If he's the only one that guesses and he says five ounces, he'll, he'll get the winner. <laughs> Wants to pay the shipping. Uh oh, Frogman says one point seven seven pounds. I don't think you want to pay the shipping for it for Australia though. Wrong answer. This isn't a sheeted wing. Yeah, it's not sheeted. Just the foam wing. Just the foam. No boss wood whatsoever. Sorry, Chris. It's not three and a half. <laughs> okay, I think I got this stupid thing over here figured out. T bone says 2.2 .2 ounces. 2.2. That ain't it. And we'll, we'll give you, I mean, if you get close. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exact. Whoever's the closest Whoever's to the, the way. Whoever's the closest at the end. Everybody quits guessing. We got the frog man. 
Brian Martin says 1.77. And then Charles Carter says five ounces. Gary Sinclair says six. Christopher Everson says three and a half. T-Bone says 2.2. Hey, we gave you the measurements of it and figure one pound per cubic foot foam. And you can come up with a pretty good guesstimate. If Fred Buck was watching, he could tell you exactly. <laughs> yeah, if, if you know how to do the average of a week. And now Charles says 2.5 ounces. Doing, you just put the carbon bale over the top one. Yeah, using white glue, making it with basically wallpaper paste. Uh, you probably take paper mache and make them. He's got. He, he uses a couple layers in certain places, you know. And there's a point to that. I can, I can see it, especially for electric. Uh, you know, you don't have to fuel proof anything, and for a semi rugged, fast built stunt trainer, um, yeah, I can see that. I haven't seen one in person, but I've seen the videos of it and stuff, and up close pictures, and they look pretty nice. T Bone says 1.5 ounces. As soon as he's done cutting, we'll weigh that other core and see if they're the same. They should be. And it's just for one panel that we're, the weight is for. It's all coming back to me now, John. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, you got that grease going. Yeah. Took me a while. Like riding the bus. Yeah. Are you on Stunt Hanger yet, Dan? I'm a subscriber. Not to the YouTube channel, to the regular Stunt Hanger website. Um, no, I don't think I am. Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know I didn't know you got on there. What, how do you do that? Oh, man. It's bigger than YouTube by a hundred times. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. There's, there's your category over there you want to look at. Well, I, I need to check that out then. You know, it's got, you got a search function. If you want to find out about something, you can just search for it. Uh, you know, the, you advantage, know. the advantage of Stunt Hanger with me I got Sparky's number. I just call him up. And <laughs> Four ounces. Nope, that ain't it, Gary. When this is done and he takes it out, I'm going to unveil, un, unveil the wheat. And the guy closest to it is going to get it. Anybody that's built a thumb wing knows that you got to sand. Smooth, even though yeah. they're cut nice and smooth, you still got to get the sand from a lot of smooth. Yeah. You got to get the fuzz off. Yeah. yeah. Let Dan ship them in the shipping business. Or if you don't want to pay the shipping and you can be around, we we'll just bring it to the Nats or something. I mean, if you're close. Uh, this guy is in Oz, wherever that is. It's Australia, right? Oh, yeah, that's not worth it then. Yeah. It's not it's worth it to send it to Oz. It tells him that. Not found. Oh. In Where do you live, Frog? I can't tell. Let's see.
Same way. Alright. The, the total weight of each cell, how is it divided? The total weight of each cell is 1.8 ounces, so frog margin is the closest to the weight. Can I see Washington? Somehow, I'm going to have to get down the uh, address. I, I can't help you with this. You know, we will need the estimate. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'll get my estimate. Um, ask him if he's a PAMPER member and he's on the, is his address on the website. Uh, on the are you a PAMPER member, Frog, and are you on the website? You can send a, send me a message on Sunday, and I'll get the. Uh, of course, we're gonna get Danny signed up here too, Sunday. What camera are you got? Got him in the Point seven seven, one point eight. That's wow. Yeah, pretty damn close. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's probably bought web uh, cords before. You know. No doubt. Probably sitting there in his workshop with a thumb core in hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, I haven't shipped anything like this in so long. I'm not sure if, if they do the size. If it, um, hopefully they do the weight. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. There was a big controversy on there a while back about a guy trying to ship a kit, like mm -hmm. an arc or something, or a kit, and. Uh, he was saying, everybody said, well, Burdick only charges $20 for shipping. Well, Burdick may get some kind of special deal or whatever, but it was like $70 or something like that to ship a kit from yeah. California to Ohio. Yeah. Mm. Well, the other thing, as a business, he might give you, it might cost him more than he's, Paying to ship it, but it's built into the kit. I don't know how to explain that. Yeah, it's built into the price. Or, you know. When I was doing foam cores, and I and I I'd, uh, I'd sell a sheeted wing. I was making money off of everything. The wood that went on it, I was selling at retail, but I could buy it at wholesale. Mm -hmm. 
So if somebody would send me their wood and want the same price and subtract what the wood would cost, I'm losing money because I was making money on the markup of the sheeting. So there's a lot of factors that go into that that aren't really obvious at the But I do know being in the shipping business, if FedEx, UPS, or the post office, they come into your business every day. You get a business rate, and uh, you get a different rate than somebody walking in with one box. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. UPS, man, every day. Yeah. You see, you're a regular owner stop. Yeah. So if they roll in there and you have something every day, it's a different price. I know that from the, even the LTL industry where um, so these things might need a little final tweaking, you know. No, oh, that ain't bad at all. That's <laughs> that's real close. But. Um, and okay, you're see, back in the right crate. You know, the main thing is, so too, um, with these lengths, mark them. You've got the center line. You, you always have a reference. So if you cheat this wing, well, let's say you cap it leading trailing edge, then what you do is you transfer this line to that leading edge and the trail. So then mm -hmm. when you shape it, you still have that reference. So. See, that's the top, so that'll be the left. I think that's right. Um, double check it. Let me see what this um, is. A little, see, right here, there's a little bit more sanding that needs to be done on this right here. So these wings aren't dead perfect, but they're as nice as any of I've ever gotten. Yes, a crane transfer former could work for a power for a cutter. Double check and look at them. I guess we're going to wrap it up. We've been on three or two and a half, or you got you want to run some more? Is that about it or what? Well, I think I pretty much covered most of it. I mean, um, I got to accomplish what I set out to do today. I mean, demold a bell crank, a gear, lay up a bell crank and a gear, and cut from wing. So. Um, Sparky was laughing at me, John. He, I told him, I said, here's what I'm planning to do. And he busted out in this big laugh. I said, what's so funny? He said, oh, he said, you'll never get all that done. <laughs> he said, he said, when I go to John's, he said, I'm lucky to get half of what I set out to do. I said, well, I know what you're talking about. I've been there and been in those situations. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to stay on task. It isn't just that, you know, you got grandiose ideas, and I do it all the time myself, you know, thinking, well, I'm going to run around here, and I'm going to get this and this and this. Uh, but I just hope, you know, they can go back and reference this stuff and look at it and get some ideas. I don't expect to be thought of as the end all here it's just a uh, it's just my take on it after all the years and another way to skin the cat yeah and i'll tell you what years go by or weeks or months and somebody comes up to and they'll say hey if you would have done it this way i'm going to listen because a lot of this stuff that i came up with was input from other people um that sort of guided me along the way I've said it a thousand times. I'm the biggest thief there is out there. Not in literal sense of the term, but in... Get those ideas. Mental. Yeah. Get those ideas and run with them. And Use them. You can try them. If they work for you, great. If yeah. they might not work for you. Might not be your cup of tea to do it that way. And here's... Uh, 
Another thing, somebody says, well, that doesn't work. Well, not everything works for every situation. So if you're going to cut a big RC wing with a high taper, I mean, it might be a different cutter. So I did take that cutter and enlarged it to where it cut an eight foot wing. It was somebody cut, said square end of the wing, whatever that means. Um, the square, what are the wings? Square end? The square end of wing. Square inches. Square, oh, square inches. square inches of the wing. Okay. Um, what is it? It's probably going to be 600 and 70 probably. 600 and 70. 670. 670. 670. 700 maybe. Depending how big a flap you put on it. Yeah. So let's just say without right flaps. There. Without flaps and without a tip. Tip. 18 by 28. 18 by 28, multiply it. Um, let's see here. Five oh four on that. Plus tip, plus flash. So it's gonna be around. Yeah, 504. That's, and there's almost, yeah, they've got to be close to 700. It's too much. You lock them tips off. Yeah. Thanks for the class, Gary Meyer says. Tell the guy that got the wing, tell him that. He's going to have to run a sandy block over that leading edge a little bit on both of them and get that thing tuned up. Rob, you're going to have to send me a message on stun hanger and I'll get you in touch with Dan and hit the wing out to you. And work out the shipping with him. All right, guys, we're going to end the stream. I appreciate you watching. It's been a fun day. Uh, I'll probably be on tomorrow doing something. And, uh, Fairwind's tight lines. We'll see ya. Bye. Bye. How many viewers did we have this time around, sir?